to beat a team three times. We'll see what takes place today. I relied on always stirring things up a little bit. And not that this matchup, this rivalry, needs anything extra in the mix. Duke and North Carolina ready to tip us off for the evening session of quarterfinal Friday here from the ACC Women's Tournament in Greensboro, North Carolina. Both of these teams will probably start in their man-to-man, -man, although Carolina will play some matchup zone. Re rebounding is so important in this one to play the tempo that you want to play. You have to execute. Already deep into that shot clock are the Tar Heels. Kennedy Todd Williams takes the first shot of the game. Speaking of rebounding, nobody can hang on to it. Goes out of bounds and goes to the two-seeded Duke Blue Devils who come in here fresh. They got the double by coming into the tournament as you take a look at their starting five. Celeste Taylor has been such a leader this year for this team under Carol Lawson. Kennedy Brown, the junior transfer from Oregon State. And Cheyenne Day Wilson, another one to keep an eye on, has the ball here. Hands off to Reagan Richardson, a transfer from Georgia. North Carolina starting in their matchup zone. Melissa Usby on the back row is the key to their defensive effort. Richardson up and in. Good ball movement by Duke. You get an open jump shot, and you're going to get shots if you move the ball against overplaying defenses. you got to be ready to catch and shoot. North Carolina finally getting healthy at just the right time. Alyssa Usby had missed five games. Eva Hodgson had missed eight. They are both back and had their highest point total since their return in North Carolina's win yesterday against Clemson. That is a travel on Richardson. Courtney Banghart picking up her first ACC tournament win with the Tar Heels getting their victory yesterday against the Clemson Tigers. Had never won in Greensboro until yesterday. And this is a North Carolina team that is trending in the right direction. They're getting deeper, they are healthier. Alyssa Usby gives them a multi-dimensional look to their defense. And Kara Lawson certainly was a contender for ACC Coach of the Year, Neil Ivey. Getting that honor as her Fighting Irish won the regular season title, but the job Carol Lawson has done turning this program around. I mean, they were projected to finish seventh. They finished tenth in the league last year, second this year. Kennedy Todd Williams, good off the glass. North Carolina with numbers versus the Duke pressure, three on one, and you have to convert those opportunities. Richardson looking inside, Usby read it, took it away. She has incredible anticipation skills. I think Mikasa Robinson at Louisville and Alyssa Usby both could have been candidates for national, or excuse me, for ACC Defensive Player of the Year, which nat naturally puts you in the conversation for National Defensive Player of the Year. Kennedy Todd Williams got stuck up in the air. Had nowhere to go with the basketball. That's a nice move by Day Wilson. She gives it up, though, on the inside. North Carolina makes a few more threes than Duke does on the average, but North Carolina will guard inside out and force Duke to hit some shots. They will be in the gaps, and they will make them become a jump shooting team. Watch this take by Deja Kelly. She gets hips and shoulders past the Defensive Player of the Year and gets to the second level to draw help. Deja Kelly can go off the bounce against just about any player in this league. Kennedy Brown got called for the foul. She heads to the bench. Mia Heidi, the grad transfer from Tulane, comes on in her place for Duke. And I don't know, Debbie, you think a player like Deja Kelly, all ACC first team selection back-to-back -back years, she knows she's going up against an elite defensive player, an elite defensive team. Maybe a little extra on that drive to prove she can get through. Well, I think there's a little extra on everything tonight. It's true. You know, I also expect a tight whistle. Rivals, so much on the line. Two really physical defensive teams. They're going to clean it up early. Elizabeth Balagoon, don't forget about her. She drains the three. 
Duke with their full court, man-to-man -man pressure. Blue Devils have shot the ball well from three this season. Third in the league as a team, and Balagoon the bets have bumped them, hitting at about 44% from beyond the arc. Eight to shoot for the Tar Heels. Anya Poole looking for help. Must be wanted inside. She's going to get it. And the two Blue Devils there do the job defensively. Look at that early seal inside. And then Usby with a block. Take a look at Balagoon in the corner right here and watch the penetration into the gap by Celeste Taylor. This is just a really good reject rejection of the screen. You draw Usby to help. Too late to recover to the corner. It's very well designed and very well done by Duke. And well done there by the Blue Devils. They force a timeout. North Carolina having trouble getting it in. It's an early two-point lead for the Blue Devils. The TC Women's Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Plenty of fans in various shades of blue packing the house for this matchup between Duke and North Carolina. And when you talk about this Duke defensive team, I mean, these are national ranks in terms of scoring defense and field goal percentage defense that the Blue Devils have put up this season. Well, they contest every action. They move their feet. They've got high hands. They're connected defensively. They just make every movement difficult. North Carolina just won for their first six from the field. There is a foul called on the floor. Denise Brooks, Angelica Suffren, Mark Resch are officiating crew tonight. Eva Hodgson adding that 15 pounds of muscle. You wonder where plays help her with that strength. And that's an example of it right there. Being able to hold her ground on the glass and be able to draw a foul on an offensive rebound. Foul is called on Cheyenne Day Wilson. Usby, acrobatic, but no finish. Still just one made field goal for North Carolina. Yeah, good call by Denise Brooks, the official. That is a moving late drag screen. And Duke is really good at setting those drags inside the three-point line. Usby looking inside. Good handoff there, bouncing it into the paint to pool. The one thing about Courtney Banghart's press breakers by design is they're not just trying to get the ball in bounds. They are looking to attack Duke, and they have had numbers. Two of their baskets, as a matter of fact, both their baskets, or off Duke's pressure with them attacking with numbers. Richardson, she pulls up and makes another. Do you expect, Debbie, another grind it out type of matchup between these two tonight? No. Let's hope not for the good of the game. <laughs> the product is the narrative. We know it's going to be competitive, but I think it'll be played at a much higher offensive level. Well, it was season lows in points for both teams in the last meeting. 45-41 North Carolina winners as Kelly drives. Must be doing a good job of stopping the ball. Still no points for Celeste Taylor. She averages just under 12 and is the leading scorer for the Blue Devils. Carol Lawson calls every play for Duke on the offensive end. Sometimes they turn around to look for her, and I've seen them turn it over that way. Vanessa DeJesus drives the lane. Smart. The court opens up, and DeJesus takes advantage. Eva Hodgson coming off a really good shooting performance yesterday against Clemson. Four of seven from three. On the way to 13 points. Husky wanted it back. And DeJesus read it well. She went flying in, trying to get the steal. There is a foul called, however. Vanessa DeJesus has been a starter in the past. Look at all the space right here. Watch what happens when she comes into this dribble handoff. She reads it so well. There's no help at the midline. Great take inside. That was a foul on Deja Kelly a moment ago. North Carolina did run into some foul trouble, had to use that depth which you mentioned has grown in these last few games as 
Usby and Hodgson both available only for the last two regular season games. They've been out a lot of February. Heidi pulling down the rebound for the Blue Devils to Jesus. North Carolina on the run. Heidi got back and was big enough defensively to stop Kelly. A little chaotic and frenetic, as you might imagine, our officiating crew pointing the other direction. Kayla McPherson coming on for Kennedy Todd Williams. Jordan Oliver, Baylor transfer out there for the Blue Devils as well. So Duke has already played nine players. North Carolina has played eight. That's how deep these teams are. Getting an early run, getting an early sweat. Paulina Paris also off the bench for the Tar Heels. And you need that this time of year more than any. Get into tournaments. McPherson with the miss. Oliver breaking out in front of everybody except the Jesus. And then Paris, the freshman, getting back defensively. Watch Paulina Paris right here on a sprint to stop the ball. She defensive fakes and then recovers to get a tip and deflection and allow North Carolina to set their D. Every possession so magnified once you get into the postseason. Courtney Banghart said that a number of times leading up to this ACC tournament and you can see it. The hustle and defense to get back. The need to execute when you have the basketball. Destiny Adams. She played a big role off the bench yesterday as well. Came on and got some important points. Eight to shoot, Harris. And here comes a bit of a trap. There's a switch. Kelly breaks out of the two Blue Devils. Yeah, Des Deja Kelly would like to run Celeste Taylor off as many screens as she can to get rid of her, right? Just to get another switch and get somebody else to defend her. Well, North Carolina, one for their last nine, oh for their last four. Duke defense doing its thing again here early. The Tar Heels just five points. North Carolina is in their man. They're going to go Iverson action. This usually leads to a ball reversal and then a slip on the strong side. Here comes a ball reversal and then a screen and then a slip. That time Heidi was posting up. That's why there was no room for the slip. Three to shoot. Now two, the drive. Harris, she had enough daylight to say, time for my shot, and she makes it. I mean, these freshmen have no hesitation for North Carolina. They don't care how big the moment is. Well, they've had to really step up with the injuries that North Carolina has dealt with. Paulina Paris and McPherson in particular in the backcourt. Watch Paris. Hands down. Oh, you got to close out a little longer than that. Big triple from the top of the floor for the rookie. Ladies, just a reminder, UNC is the only school to have two different players earn that ACC Freshman of the Week honors this season, and it's because they've been able to step in. You mentioned it, Jen, just how they've been able to step up with injuries throughout this season especially to Alyssa Usby and Eva Hodgson, missing 13 total games together. But they gained the confidence with one another. Kayla McPherson has been a breath of fresh air since so she's been able to come back for them. Well, McPherson, Jen, missed 808 days as a, a, with her injuries and with her knee injuries. And we watched her through January when we had games in Chapel Hill, working out before the games. And mm -hmm. you could tell she was getting game ready. And when she stepped on the floor against Clemson in her first game, she was game ready. 
Bodies on the floor. Jump ball the call. It'll stay on this end. 13 seconds on the shot clock. January 29th, by the way, is when Kayla McPherson made her debut. Former Georgia Gatorade Player of the Year, big time scorer and a ton of speed. Seven on the shot clock now, contested shot. Still here. Duke hasn't scored in the last three minutes and 30, 46 seconds now, almost four minutes. is not going to help the cause. Taylor on the bench. No points for the Blue Devils' leading score. They're just checking the clock. And while we get that cleared up. We will remind you about the 70th annual New York Life ACC Men's Tournament, which begins Tuesday afternoon right here at the Greensboro Coliseum. All three first-round games coming your way starting at 2 Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Our first quarter getting ready to come to a close here in Greensboro. One point advantage for Duke. Must be She's stuck, and she's blocked. Good D inside. North Carolina couldn't get anybody open because Duke denied one pass away all over the floor. Taya Corsdale, grad transfer from Oregon State, getting the block on the play. One final play of quarter number one. Can Duke execute? Husby bats it away. Will the final play go to the Tar Heels? McPherson! This <laughs> place ready to erupt, and it is a low-scoring affair so far. Single digits for both. Who will prevail between Duke and North Carolina? Only one moves on to the semifinals tomorrow. In the ACC tournament, and both of these programs at the moment projected to host in the NCAA tournament, according to Charlie Cream. Charlie saying earlier today, Duke will stay where he projects them to be. They're currently a three seed in the NCAA tournament. Regardless of what happens tonight, North Carolina not as confident that they could stay with a loss. Good execution, getting to the elbow. I think there's so much to happen in all the power leagues right now to determine the last couple of spots. Certainly winning helps remove any doubt. Take care of your own business, right? And That's right. Get where you'd like to go. Now Usby's on the top. Destiny Adams had it, but slipped and fell out of bounds. And Balagoon walked with it. Carolina ball, eighth turnover by the Blue Devils. Karen Lawson's assistant coaches there, Tia Jackson and Karen Lang, both played for one of the best defensive minds in college basketball and Vivian Stringer, and they call the defense. You'll see Tia Jackson stand up once in a while and call the D, and Coach Lawson takes care of the O. Multiple defenders have been on Deja Kelly also. Adams well off the mark. Both teams looking for a little more O. Oh, the Blue Devils O oh, for their last eight. And that single digit quarter for an opponent, nothing new for Duke. It's the 30th time they've done that this season. Okay, this is starting to look like the last game because they're both <laughs> turning it over and neither one can get a basket. Safe to say neither coach can be especially pleased, but that's a good promising move for Kennedy Brown. Eleven ten. Duke back in front. Usby from the corner. Yeah, she got it. 
First points of the game for Usby. The big three, Usby, Todd, Williams, and Kelly all had nine points to help North Carolina to the win on Sunday against Duke. There is so much dribbling going on by both teams. I think this game might actually be decided by assisted baskets because if you move the ball and you reverse sides of the floor, your percentage of going up, your scoring goes up. Watch Deja Kelly right here, gets underneath the basket. It's a great kick to Usby. Who, did they give her a three for that? They sure did, and that would be just her sixth three in ACC play. Well, Kennedy Brown picked up her second personal foul. So she spent a lot of that first quarter on the bench after picking up a foul. Now she goes back to the bench for Duke. You gotta be strong with the ball. You gotta cut hard. You gotta play the game low to high. You gotta play the hips and shoulders game when you're attacking a closeout. Harris with the shot clock winding down. Adams couldn't get the rebound away from Richardson. Oh, it bobbled off the fingertips, the crowd. Helping the officials out. Traveled twice. <laughs> All right, Debbie, so I need to ask you, so you hear this a lot, right? That it's hard to beat a team three times in the same season. Yeah. Do you buy it? No, I don't, and here's why. You played one way to win. Then you played another way, and you won again. The whole time you're playing and winning, the other team is countering, they're trying. So now you know that what you do is successful. This is a game about minimizing your mistakes, and there's a lot of emotion in this particular rivalry, so I don't buy that, that you can't beat a team three times. North Carolina fans certainly hoping you're correct on that as the Tar Heels swept the season series for the second straight year. Kelly. Both teams speed up the other team offensively, so you gotta be ready to score. Catch and shoot, score, like that bump right there. There's some contact on that. Todd Williams went behind the back, up the floor to Usby, but out of bounds. See how fast both teams are playing? They're out of control. Yep. They're not playing the game on balance. There's no change of rhythm. It's just bang, 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 back and forth. Now, whoever gets control of their momentum and their pace is going to execute better right here. And which team can do that? Because neither one has shown us that they can do that yet. But it will come. It's coming. Blue Devils have 10 turnovers in the game. North Carolina has forced the Blue Devils into 54 in their season series. Ooh. Now Heidi was on the floor, and then Usby goes down. And it is on Heidi, her second. I guess you don't expect to play your rival without well, coming out with a few more bruises and floor burns. Yeah, uh, this is usually a double ice bath game. Count your floor burns on top of your floor burns. Winner of this one moving on to the semifinals will face the winner of our next matchup between Virginia Tech and Miami. We'll have that one coming up for you later tonight. Usby. Going with her left, and she'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, this is a really good play, how the lane opens up for Usby. I mean, she gets two strong dribbles, and she is going hard to the bucket, draws some contact. But you know what? She's not a good free throw shooter. This is the one part of her game at 58%, which is so surprising to me. It is, because she seems to do everything else, not just well, but exceedingly well. And so now you gotta be ready to rebound, because she made the first one and she's 58%, right? She played really well last night. There it is. Duke winning the rebounding battle pretty significantly right now, 18 to five in favor of the Blue Devils on the boards. North Carolina locking up one pass away. So much dribbling and that's way off. And Day Wilson launched that shot right in front of us so we could see the second left her hands angle one right.
Blue Devils one of their last 13. Oh, that ball, they pointed North Carolina's way. I thought it was North Carolina's ball. Right now, Duke getting ready to inbounds. Here's it, the play. It goes off her foot. It went right off her foot. And of course, this is not something you can review until the final minute of the game. So they have to go with the call. That was whistled, and Duke trying to take advantage of that. See how quick everything is? Taylor, yes! Boom. Wide open, Celeste Taylor, the only player for Duke in double figures. Finally gets on the board for her team. That's her first basket. He evens us up at 14 points apiece. Kelly, beautiful hesitation and finish. For Deja Kelly, that's her first basket of the game. So the two top scorers finally scratch. Wide open shot in the corner was the freshman Ashlyn Jackson for the Blue Devils. Uspi, McPherson on the move for North Carolina. And Celeste Taylor is not going to give anything easy. And watch the play right here by Duke. They drive it baseline. Look how flat and lateral the defense is for North Carolina. And then look at all this space that Celeste Taylor has to catch and shoot. The defense seeks the level of the ball. When you get the ball behind the defense, the defense flattens out. The top of the floor opens up. It's a very well de designed play, but it's also a great read by Celeste Taylor to make that play. Taylor, the offensive and defensive leader for this Blue Devil team all season long. Terrific crowd here in Greensboro, as you would expect for North Carolina and Duke, not too far away. Both shades of blue, well represented, and a bit of red, too, left over from NC State's See, game earlier. There's the high risk, high reward anticipation of knowing that North Carolina could change up their D after every timeout, and that's exactly what Courtney Banghart did. That's the first time we've seen them trap when the ball came over midcourt, and that's a turnover by Duke. Kayla McPherson, McDonald's All-American, who led the country in scoring a couple of years ago. Didn't play all of last year after a knee injury in high school and missed a good portion of this season. Kelly. Well, she had a great work, a good look working off that ball screen on the top of the floor. And Destiny Adams can roll, but she also can pop. She has three-point shooting ability. This is called think, North Carolina yeah, ball. Now they're even because <laughs> it was North Carolina's ball earlier. Another pull up from Kelly. This one good. Money at the elbows. When North Carolina runs sets to get her to the two elbows, she usually can make that 15-footer pull-up jump shot, even under duress. Four-point North Carolina lead. Five points in the game for Kelly. Going to be Todd Williams now on the Celeste Taylor matchup. Six to shoot for the Blue Devils. Balagoon. It's important for North Carolina to start grabbing some rebounds. It was a 22-6 Duke advantage on the boards. Now reverse it. Different ways to get into horns. McPherson! I think she's feeling a little bit of that extra postseason energy here in Greensboro, her first appearance. Well, first of all, she is super athletic. Doesn't look like she lost any quicks, hops, or explosion based on all the knee injuries that she's endured. And it, it speaks to her rehab and how hard she worked to get ready physically and mentally to be prepared to play for this moment right now. 
Coming up later tonight, after the Miami-Virginia Tech matchup, we will have our Nothing But Net crew on hand with all the post-game coverage from all the day's games here in Greensboro. They'll have highlights, analysis, insight. It's a Nothing But Net crew working hard all tournament long. A free throw shooting. Bell may be going off for the Tar Heels with their performance against Clemson. Shot just 50% from the line in that win yeah. yesterday. And so Mia Heidi hasn't made a three all season and she takes that quick shot, right? I mean, probably not in the playbook for Carol Lawson right now. Oh, that was Corsdale, excuse me. Corsdale. That was hit by a North Carolina player. That's why Taylor still had her dribble alive and she found her teammate. Just another way to get into their entries. Kelly. And the whistle counted, she says. And give me one more. It's a misdirection. They sweep around circle action around the high post area and then Richardson's late Deja Kelly's ready to shoot when is Deja Kelly not ready to shoot it <laughs> eight points in the game for Kelly now nine now if North Carolina takes care of the basketball because Duke struggles to score this Six-point lead feels like 10 or 12. Duke as a team averages 64.7 points per game, just over 60 in conference play this season. And they just seem all out of sorts on the offensive yeah. end. 12 turnover. They're very structured in their offense. If they can't get anything off their defense, you know, then they're definitely running plays. Otherwise, there's freedom when you get it off your D because you can score in transition. North Carolina, the seven seed in this tournament. Duke, the two seed. Earning the double by Todd Williams. Adams has gotten up and gone down hard couple of times already in this game. McPherson flying in, tries to keep it in play. Oh, Kelly and the Tar Heels want to make something of this. Todd Williams is fouled. Both players go down. This is incredible hustle by both teams. This is how important advancing in the ACC tournament is. McPherson into the stands, saves it behind her back. Can you think about all the injuries in 808 days? That kid didn't get to play. Look how much she loves it. Todd Williams making good from the free throw line. All ACC second team selection this season for Kennedy Todd Williams. I'd like to see Celeste Taylor have the next set right here offensively for Duke. She's been their most consistent. She's their best scorer. She averages double figures. She's the only one. She only has one basket in the game. Balagoon just at 10. In conference play though, Taylor, the only one to your point. There she is, a bucket. Eight point advantage, largest of the game for North Carolina. McPherson. <laughs> she and Todd Williams not exactly on the same page. Trying to throw that drift pass to the deep corner. See, now the game, see, the, take a collective breath, dude, right? Last shot right here of the half. There's a three second differential. Eight to shoot now. Balagoon drains the three. Oh, 
Kelly does get the shot off. That won't go, but it is a North Carolina advantage holding Duke below 20 in the first half, 24-19. The Tar Heels out in front. Let's now hear from Courtney Banghart. She's with Angel. Coach, how big have the plays that don't show up in the box score been for you in this first half? You know, it's just that they've got to stay connected on the defensive end. No home run passes. We're just going for singles right now. See how both teams come out of the locker room. Five-point advantage for the Tar Heels. Tanya Poole. Collinsport getting it inside. Kennedy Brown playing with two fouls for the Blue Devils. She's had a hard time staying on the floor, but she does her job defensively this time. Three-second violation. And Angel, I hear you've had a chance to catch up with Kara Lawson. Yes, and she kept it short and sweet. She said, we're giving up too many layups, and we also need to limit our turnover. She was not happy with the 13 in the first half. Coming into the game, one of the messages to her team was we had 25 turnovers the last game against Carolina. That has to change. Simple and to the point, but this Blue Devil team has found a way so many times this season. Richardson, then the best offensively for Duke in this game. She has eight. If you move the ball and shift the zone, and you match up in transition defense, right? Those are a couple things that are all fixable. They move the ball, they get an open shot in the middle of the floor, and then you can't lose Hodgson in defense. On, on the defensive transition game. She's looking to spot up from three-point line. Celeste Taylor, just three points in the game for Duke, their leading scorer on the season. Five to shoot. Day Wilson, tough shot, and she will shoot some free throws. Kelly and Poole both there defensively. It is Kelly's second. I don't think the North Carolina defense has gotten enough credit so far as well because they have done a really good job of contesting. They've rebounded. Duke has not really been able to get on the offensive boards and score. They've got eight offensive rebounds, but they haven't scored off them. A reminder to fans to download the ACC three-point challenge app presented by New York Life to help benefit the local boys and girls club. You can score points for your school, and after the tournament, the local Boys and Girls Club will receive a donation from New York Life based on their affiliated team's final ranking. Now, I don't know how that shot doesn't go in. It's gotta be the ball. <laughs> well, you mentioned at halftime, Duke hadn't shot any free throws. Now they have, but they're no better for it. 0 for 2, trip to the line. Kelly. Maligan kept it alive, but it goes back into the hands of the heels. Oh, good screen. Good Watch set. Uh-oh. That was a back-to-back -back triples for Hodgson. Very well-designed play by Courtney Banghart, one she saved for the second half. Those back-to-back -back threes help North Carolina to their largest lead of the game. Brown does make good on that turnaround jumper. At 6-6 with a half hook, that will be unguardable. Hodgson, same spot, block this time. Richardson wasn't having any of that again. Now she couldn't get the points on the other end. The pass a little off the mark. Up and down we go. Todd Williams of North Carolina looking for the basket. Another block, Balagoon this time. Little excuse me screen there. Dave Wilson going into the back of Balagoon. Second foul on Taylor. I mean, watch this play right here. Let it roll. Okay, when the ball goes inside to Usby, okay, freeze it right here. The ball's here. Now watch the screen right here and the flare by Hodgson. It's a very well-designed play. It's a terrific job by Poole. 
And again, us be right in the shooter's pocket, where all you have to do is fire away. North Carolina actually shooting much better from three-point range in this game than they are from two. They're five for 10 from three and five for 22 from two. Oliver off the bench, grabs the rebound. Deja Kelly is now three for 11 in this game. She has taken the most shots of any North Carolina Tar Heels. She's taken a third of their field goal attempts. Balagoon drains a three of her own. That's her third triple of the night. If you're Courtney Banghart, are you okay with that number of shots for Kelly? I might think that because she draws so much attention that she can get in the paint and make a play for someone else now. Every time she drives, she drives to score. Kelly, one of the top scorers in the ACC this season. Drives it herself again. It's still with the Tar Heels. Usby steps into it. Usby, not done yet. Brown finally regains control for Duke. And it's a foul on Usby. Well, we have another game coming your way later tonight. The Virginia Tech Hokies uh, taking on the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, that looks like some offense getting off the Tech bus. And this looks like some defense getting off the Miami bus. <laughs> well, Miami's going to need a little defense to try to contain that high-scoring Hokie attack. And their two-time ACC Player of the Year, Liz Kitley, back in... Her hometown of Greensboro, close to it. Day Wilson off the rim and in. So quick. Foul in the paint. Usby's down on the floor. And immediately Mark Rash is calling the other officials in to talk this over. He's got Balagoon on the foul. They might... Look at this one. Maybe not. I don't know. That's typically one they look at. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally one they need to look at. Okay, file that one in the back of your mind when a ticky tack one happens. It's the first personal on Balogun. Perhaps fortunate there was not another look taken at that tape. McPherson off balance in the corner, and then Usby says, thank you very much. And Duke hasn't done anything easy. It hasn't been pretty, yet it's a two-possession game. And Cheyenne Day-Wilson, I think, is starting to get hot. And she wanted the ball back. Yeah, she wants the ball. I give it to her. Instead, they go to Balagoon in the corner. She has hit three threes in the game. Catch me if you can, says McPherson, but now she slows it down, pulls it back out. Kelly. Her Tech. movement with the ball causes that foul that Brown commits. Attack that hip. Husby with the glass. North Carolina, just a two possession game. It's that time of year where Charlie Cream does not sleep. Actually, I don't think he sleeps ever at the time that we get all of his updates, but here's what you see for the ACC. Nine teams were projected in Syracuse now first four out after the Orange lost here in Greensboro, and you see Duke and North Carolina at the moment both slated to host the Miami Hurricanes. Projected a 10 seed, the Cavender Twins. Such now, a big addition this year for Miami. Now, I spoke to the Cavender Twins this morning in the hotel lobby, and they were chomping on that gum hard early this morning because <laughs> they could not wait to play. They're already locked in. You got to come and watch this next game. Virginia Tech has been the hottest team in the ACC and has Kenny Brooks has done a coach of the year kind of job, and Miami played as well as they played all season last night. This will be a really fun one with the player of the year, Elizabeth Kitley, and Georgia A. Moore, one of the top point guards in the league, going against 
a small, scrappy, stingy, Katie Meyer built Miami defense. It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, can anybody stop, slow down the Hokies? North Carolina came close. I thought you were gonna say, can anybody score? Well, yeah, they'll <laughs> score. <laughs> that one I, I feel confident in, yes. Virginia Tech having won their last eight program record, eight straight ACC wins. Second you know, personal on Adams every, there, Debbie. Every time Duke and Carolina meet, it's usually in the semis or the finals. It's never been in the quarters since 1980. That's how long ago they've met. This is the 14th time. And all 13 prior have been semis or finals. Four on the shot clock and counting. Balagoon. Brown. Or Heidi, excuse me, just reached up above everybody. McPherson. Didn't want to head into the paint just yet. Tar Heels, one of their last nine. Kelly, hoping to change that. Can't. Heidi running the floor. Brought it down, though. That put it in Usby territory. Good hustle. Not a clean catch. You know, just pass and catch sometimes on the move is challenging for bigs. Both teams looking for points. North Carolina, one of their last 10. They throw it away. Duke, a scoring drought of two and a half minutes. I mean, watch us be sprint. Take care of this. I don't think she traveled either. Recovery speed. You gotta catch that ball cleanly and lay it in. Hey, Wilson, fouled by McPherson on the play. Cheyenne Day Wilson missed her first two free throw attempts. She'll get another shot at it here now. Sophomore and of Toronto, Ontario. She's starting to take over a little bit, and I like it. The ball in her hands, it seems to move better offensively. The 70th annual New York Life ACC Men's Tournament starts right here in the Greensboro Coliseum on Tuesday. We'll have all three first-round games for you on ACCN. That starts at 2 p.m. Eastern. But, of course, you can also catch all of those on the ESPN app. Day Wilson does hit one of the two. ACC Freshman of the Year was voted by the coaches last year. And then Ashlyn Jackson called for the foul, trying to defend. Again, an example of the versatility of us be to be able to handle against pressure. They bring the double team. Of course, the Duke fans didn't like that foul. I can't figure out who the NC State fans are rooting for. There's still a lot of them in here. I'm guessing neither. <laughs> they, they may have the same dilemma, I would imagine. They're probably appreciating that nobody's really doing anything offensively. They don't have to worry about who to cheer for. North Carolina still with the advantage. Tar Heels have led by as many as nine. There's a pass and a play for someone else. And that's the second air ball that Destiny Adams has shot from outside. And she's a very capable three-point shooter. And she hit some big threes at home to beat NC State. Many people watch that game will recall those late fourth quarter triples that put the game away. But see, that's part of what's happening here. Everybody's playing a little bit faster, right? Everybody's a little revved up. Nobody is in double digits in either color uniform. Duke field goal at the 520 mark. And there's a foul on the Tar Heels. Adams trying to get in there. If it is on her, it's her third. And it is. So that'll put Mia Heidi on the free throw line. 
transfer. She's from Austin, Texas, played at Tulane. Very well coached by Lisa Stockton at Tulane and her staff during her time in the American Conference. And good from the free throw line. It's a 10-2 Duke run and a one-point game. There are going to be cold spells. The question is, how can you get out of them? Not like that. Heidi says, uh-uh. One of the best shot blockers all time at Tulane. Jackson. Three players hit the deck. Kelly comes away with the basketball. She is going right to the rim and in. I mean, you got to give it to Deja Kelly. She's putting her head down and is determined to score for the Tar Heels with her offhand and an and one opportunity. I think she said, I hear you, Debbie Antonelli. You asked if anybody's going to score. I'm going to step up and score for my Tar Heels. I mean, she made a nice play for Destiny Adams earlier, but she didn't make it. Oh, that's an easy one for the officials. Kennedy yep. Todd Williams comes crashing in. The Tar Heels are trying to make up that big deficit on the boards. At halftime, it was a big advantage. It remains that way. It was 25-10 in favor of Duke at the half, and now they're plus 12 on the glass. And Duke... In the bonus, they'll be shooting. Taylor. I mean, both these teams are working so hard, and it doesn't look like it's resulting much on the scoreboard, but it is competitive and somewhat compelling. Well, there's a semifinal spot on the line. Certainly a lot of pride. And you know players are hitting the deck a lot when the People with the towels are really busy. They have been in this game trying to keep that floor clean and dry. Offensive rebound and a putback from Heidi. Wow. Tie game with under a minute to go in quarter number three. Usby from the elbow. Tar Heels back in front. Not going to get a two for one here. So you're going to execute a really good shot. Dane Wilson. Round and out for three. I'm not sure that was the shot Coach Lawson wanted. North Carolina's turn and time to ex execute. Kelly, you know where she's going. It's blocked, though. Jump ball is the call. Possession arrow pointing the other way, so Duke's going to get it back so, with 4.7. So Deja Kelly goes too early and gives the ball back. Some booze raining down in Greensboro. Jay Wilson takes the shot, but it is a two-point North Carolina lead. One quarter to go from Greensboro. When H&R Block's tax experts do your taxes for you, tax season feels as good as all those other seasons, like fishing season. You caught a big one, buddy. Get your maximum refund guarantee. Hard to find a basket. And maybe that's how some fans are feeling. Maybe that's how your Debbie me. Antonelli is feeling. That might be me watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> Wanting some offense. Okay, you have 10 more minutes to get it here, all right? Kelly. Now Deja Kelly will reset the two-time All-ACC first-teamer for the Tar Heels. 
Duke did go on a 13 to six run to end the third quarter. Still trail by two, haven't led since the second quarter when the score was 11 to 10. See, they're busy with the towels. We're giving points to the towel guys. Eight seconds on the shot clock for Hodgson in North Carolina. Kelly does get her shot off. What do you want on this end, Debbie, if you do? Celeste Taylor. She's got us be on her, though. Yeah, but this is the play right here. They clear it out. That's a foul. Destiny Adams came over to help. Shot clock did not reset. Day Wilson. Big offensive rebound, Corisdale. And now Taylor gets the open look and the bucket on an offensive rebound. up again. Fifth time we're tied. Day Wilson pounding Kennedy Todd Williams and she gets Duke the ball back but at what cost? There was a foul on the play called on Todd Williams her second. I mean, watch the quick hands of Cheyenne Day Wilson right here. The crossover boom. You can't be loose with a ball, and then that's a foul. And she lands and is holding her hand. I wondered if she landed on the ball. I think just hitting the deck, hand hit first, but she's ready to tough this one out. That's right, this is the fourth quarter. Both these teams have competed hard. Bodies on the floor, turnover, steals, transition opportunities. It's not been easy. Day Wilson with the defensive play on one end and the Tar Heels and McPherson get one on the other end. Hodson, Adams, us be the one to take the shot. Boy, I wonder how many shots in this game have been taken with double-digit seconds on the shot clock. Oh, how Not many, many air balls? Well, too many. we got to be better. It's been so hard for both teams to get an open look. I mean... It's a, it's elite level defense. I mean, both these teams are anchored in their defense, protecting inside out, rebounding, making every action tough for the other team. There's a risky play, and it leaves Celeste Taylor open for an elbow jumper. Those are the little mistakes that mount up in a game where scoring is at such a premium. First lead for the Blue Devils since the scoreline was 11 to 10 late in the second quarter. for back-to-back -back buckets. It's who you trust right now. It's who you trust with the ball to make plays, and I know Duke trusts this lady in number zero. Well, Celeste Taylor had the last basket for the Blue Devils, not this time. Usby trapped. McPherson working off the screen, gets around the corner. There's a numbers advantage for Duke if they want it. Day Wilson goes it alone. I don't know what kind of shot that was. That was certainly not a bailout foul. Oh, the no look. Now the follow gets it for Poole.
Better work on the break by the Tar Heels, even again. I mean, Cheyenne Day Wilson didn't have numbers there. And while Deja Kelly's not on the floor for North Carolina, Alyssa, Alyssa Ospie is who needs to be taking shots. Now the numbers were coming for Day Wilson, didn't wait for the help. Unless you get a wide open three for Hodgson. Whoops. Pearson gets it back. Todd Williams. Patient has hit more threes on the season than anybody else in a North Carolina uniform. Wasn't ready to take one there. Hodgson. Now Todd Williams ready to launch, but not the result she was looking for. And it's a foul against North Carolina as we had to break all tied up at 38. rocking chair with the Haley Van Lith lighting it up Debbie for Louisville 17 of the first 20 points for Jeff Walls Cardinals Haley Van Lith the lefty finished with 26 points to lead all scorers in the game and Louisville played really well and they will take on Notre Dame as we take a look at the bracket Notre Dame advanced with a win over three Pete NC State who makes an early exit this year from the ACC tournament. Sonia Citron, 28 point performance for a very short handed Notre Dame team with no Olivia Miles available in that one. And the Hokies getting loose, getting ready. They're up next, taking on the Miami Hurricanes in the last game of the night here on quarterfinal Friday from the Greensboro Coliseum. Jen Hildreth, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, happy to have you here with us. Ladies, to say it's been a battle is an understatement, but the Tar Heels coach is asking for more. Coach telling her team, if we do this, we have to do this together. No splittering off. Deja Kelly looked at everyone in the huddle and pointed to them. You cannot get tired. And went down the line, pointed to herself. I cannot get tired. We have to fight these last five minutes if we want to win. That shot off the side of the backboard, Angel. And yes, it has been competitive and it's not been easy. As a matter of fact, it's been really hard. Sometimes Let's see. you have to win ugly. Let's see who can handle hard better. Cool. With her left. This is so similar to the game in Cameron six days ago that I watched last night after we got done here. And this is the way the game went. It was a possession for possession. Duke actually had a seven point lead late. North Carolina came back to win it on the road. Adding a little salt to the wound, taking away any chance for the Blue Devils to have a share of the regular season title. Duke finishing second behind the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. North Carolina the seventh seed in this tournament. Five to shoot. And Day Wilson takes away any opportunity. She may have taken a shot to the face, though, as Usby came flying in to try to regain possession for her team. She's got really quick hands. And when you dribble the ball and you're loose in front of her, how many times have we seen her swipe it right here? It's a hustle play by Cheyenne Day Wilson. Ooh. Oh, there you see right there, um, inadvertent knee to the chin. Boy, she had a hard fall on the wrist, now takes a knee to the chin. Welcome to Duke, Carolina. No blood, no foul. This one's fighting down to the final seconds, it looks like. We'll see. Had six ties, seven lead changes. Richardson. Oh, thought she had an open look. Wow. I mean, that's what it's been like. I Tough mean, to get an open look, and then when you think you have it, you know, every action, every movement, player and the ball has been interrupted. Off the inbounds, a travel is called as Usby made her presence felt and it's the 18th turnover by the Blue Devils. Full court pressure picking up here by Duke. Now you got a ball fake, you got to expect the trap. Kayla McPherson. Nine games played in the regular season for North Carolina. Wondered 
if she'd ever get on the court this year, if she might decide to wait. She wanted to join this team and has helped them make a push, make a run as they've gotten healthy you just know for I, the end of the season. I, I will say this, both coaches have handled the turnovers with great patience and poise. Neither one of them has had any sort of outburst with their team. Not that we've seen. Richardson, a long two. She now has 10. 40s all around. Remember the score in the last meeting was 45-41. Final score in favor of North Carolina. Kelly. As Angel just told you, in the huddle for North Carolina, telling each of her teammates, we're not going to get tired, we're not going to give up. I mean, Deja Kelly is four for 18. Usby's taken 12 shots. Actually, it's four for 19 now. She has supreme confidence, so she's put the time in in the reps, and Courtney Banghart allows her the freedom to make those plays. Shot's not falling today. There aren't going to be a lot of offensive numbers you look at with Gusto after this game, regardless of what happens. Balagoon is fouled. She'll shoot some free throws. I mean, I cannot believe we're inside two minutes and the score is 40-40 with these two teams. And for Duke to not have gone to the free throw line at all in the first half, they are four for eight here in the second. Malagoon, a 72% free throw shooter. Rattles in the first. Malagoon, a former ACC Freshman of the Year with her third ACC program. Started at Georgia Tech, went to Louisville, now at Duke. This would be our seventh league change in the game. We've had six ties. We'll see if it stands for the Blue Devils. Two-point advantage with those Balagoon free throws. Usby. One and done. North Carolina led by as many as nine in the third quarter. Largest lead for the Blue Devils was four back in the first. Must be with a good tag from the weak side. Heidi saw Balagoon work in the baseline. Balagoon left it short. Taylor. And then it is out off of North Carolina. Deja Kelly, instead of reaching for the ball, thought it was going to go out of bounds. Look at the hustle right there. Good play by Richardson. Smart heads up to tap it off the leg of Deja Kelly. And the officials are going to review this, but... This shouldn't take very long. Yeah, I think the fans would have liked to have been able to. Under review, call on the floor is white ball. There you go. So the fans would have loved to have been able to do this earlier, but you're only allowed to review this in the final two minutes to see who it went out of bounds on. And the call was Duke ball. So they'll take a look. It seems like, from what we saw, that will most likely stand. And one of the plays that... Coach Lawson likes to run on an out-of-bounds play on baseline out-of-bounds is uh, what I call America's play because the inbounder is going to get it back for a corner three. Let's see who's inbounding the ball. It's clearly off of Deja Kelly there. Yeah, you called it. She was going for the box out and then really just an un lucky carom of the ball put it off of her and out of bounds well minute eight to go in this one not a lot of offense to talk about but what do you think is going to wind up winning this for either team at this point well i think the last possession is going to win the game it's come down to that no team is really separated from the other and what's going to be important right here is execution being strong with the ball playing time and score knowing and understanding game situation and should it be duke's ball they're going to run an ex they're going to execute an out of bounds play here that they're going to look to score on uh, they're not going to look to just take time off the clock here so let's see an indicator for duke is usually who's inbounding the ball what they're going to run
call stands, white ball. Denise Brooks on the mic. So we'll see what Carol Lawson drew up while they were doing that review. Who can execute better down the stretch? The Blue Devils just one for their last nine. And it is Cheyenne Day Wilson inbounding the ball. Look for Celeste Taylor coming off a stagger to the ball. North Carolina has to make sure they see the ball or Cheyenne Day Wilson will throw it right off the backside of Usby. We got a spill courtside. Uh-oh. Come on, fans, keep it together. Now a little bit of a different look. North Carolina in the zone. Under a minute to go, Duke a two-point lead. Six on the shot clock. Balagoon, too many fakes. Lines up with Hodgson. Deja Kelly for the lead. Hodgson, she'll try again from three. No. Two three-point attempts. Is that what Courtney Banghart would have wanted yes. there? Yes, there were good shots. They elect a foul on a two-point deficit with, it was about a seven-second differential on the clock. And I think you have to foul because if North Carolina, if you don't foul and Duke scores, you don't have enough time for two possessions. Time out on the floor. We'll take a quick break as well. Two point Duke lead. Target. Now we're ready to go. Duke ready to inbound the basketball. Two point lead for the Blue Devils. Steal, trap, quick foul. Todd Williams will go for the quick foul right off the bat. It's her fourth, but you got to go for the ball. So that will allow Duke to shoot some free throws. North Carolina does have 10 steals. And they have forced 19 Blue Devil turnovers. Cheyenne Day Wilson at the free throw line. Now for the season, she's made more free throws than any other Blue Devil, but today she's one for four. Make it one for five. That opens the door. North Carolina will call timeout to advance the ball. Tar Heels with two timeouts remaining. Three remain for Duke. Maybe unless Usby gets the rebound and then they just get into their transition game. Does go down for Day Wilson. Three point Duke advantage. Timeout North Carolina. So they can advance the basketball. I think Courtney you, go, look for. you go inside and you try to get a quick two. You get the best shot available. Now, if you shoot the three, it should be Hodgson. She's made some tonight already. She's got a couple. She made those in the second half. But you got to get the long rebound, and then you got to look to foul right away if you don't score. But I wouldn't mind getting the quick two and trying to extend the game. But if the three is available and it's open, you take it. Now we run Hodgson off a of flare. Hodgson hit four threes yesterday in North Carolina's win over Clemson. And if you remember last year in the ACC quarterfinals against Virginia Tech, she hit a big three to force overtime in that game, which the Dar Heels would wind up losing. Usby is the, looking. There was the flare. Where they wanted to go. It's Kelly instead with the drive. She gets her own rebound. North Carolina and Poole hanging on with one hand to the basketball. I mean, foul on Heidi. Deja Kelly, four for 22. I don't think I've ever seen her have this much struggle offensively. Yeah, she's the Tar Heels leading scorer, top five scorer in the ACC. Look for Duke to foul on the dribble. They're not going to give up a three. Now you got to take a three. Todd Williams has it blocked by Richardson. 
The Duke fans cheering. There are three seconds left, and Cheyenne Day Wilson's ringing them up, feeling like the job is done. She can seal the deal at the free throw line. I mean, North Carolina needed a three as time was running down. Good D right here by Richardson. Day Wilson, two for six from the line in the game. She made one of two in her last trip. Oh, there's pressure on this one. Must I say I'd like the one and one to return to the women's game. <laughs> well, if she can put this one in, she makes it a two possession well, game. This does it right here. It's in. Timeout North Carolina. That last play for the heels was too long, took too long in developing. They needed to get a quick bucket. Well, let's take a look at our Bojangles big bow moment of tonight's game. And guess what? It's a defensive play. No surprise. Richardson with a bucket. She had a couple, not many people scored more than a couple of baskets tonight, except for Richardson who had the most. She was five for seven from the floor. All right, I was giving her credit for the defense. She just had that block on Kennedy Todd Williams, North Carolina's yeah. last possession. Duke defense holding down the Tar Heels once again. 40 points for North Carolina in the game. The 86 combined points between these two on Sunday was the fewest in 105 meetings. They're not even there yet in this one. North Carolina has not finished exactly the way Courtney Banghart would have liked, that's for sure. Hodgson, oh, she lost it off her fingertips. Duke will win it. North, North Carolina will lose five of their last nine going into the NCAA tournament. And Duke advances with this pressure defense and a struggle offensively. While North Carolina shot 24% from the floor for the game, the Blue Devils shot 32%. And it was enough for them to win and avoid the three consecutive wins by North Carolina over the Blue Devils. The lowest scoring game in the 106 game history between these two rivals. The fewest points in an ACC tournament game for a winning team, but those 44, just enough for the Duke Blue Devils. They broke their record from six days ago yeah. for the lowest scoring game in the history of this rivalry. One that had stood for over 100 games. That Duke defense, boy, they are tough to get through. But it is indeed the Blue Devils.